Hey everybody, I recently did a video which was a ship with me video where I was showing you the things that sold and how I shipped them out. And some of the questions that I got were, how did you know how much to charge for the shipping if you didn't already have it boxed and everything already done before? So when you're listing your item, how do you figure out how much to charge for shipping? Maybe for some of these smaller things, it might be easier when you've got something that's like a little bitty that's gonna weigh at three ounces and it's gonna go first class, easy. But when you've got something bulkier and bigger and you don't know without boxing it up and having everything ready to go, what do you do? Because in that video, I was creating what I call Franken boxes. I didn't invent that, it's just what they call it, I guess. Where you take a couple boxes and put it together to make a bigger box, right? And I'll be doing that again today because I don't have a big box for this. And I like to, but I don't. So how did I know how much to charge for shipping and what size box when I, when I create my listing? So I'm going to show you what I do with another listing because what I've started to do, and I go back and forth about this, is when I create my listings and I'm taking my photographs, I will take my stack of plates or whatever the item is and I'll, I'll weigh it. So I've got my scale and I take a picture of the scale. So here you can see, let me move over so you can see it. This is a listing where I have kept the scale in the pictures. I don't always do this. So I will take a picture of the measurements so I know how big it is whenever I'm creating my listing. This one is six inches across the base and then about four inches across the other side, about 13, 14 inches tall. And then the, the weight on this is about, you know, 3.9, about four pounds. So this listing, I, I left the weight in there. I don't always leave the weight in there, but when I create my listing over in List Perfectly, which is where I create my listings, I will have the photograph of the scale there and then when I list it, I take it out. The reason being is that, you know, some people are like, well, you charge this much and oh, whatever. If it was over, whatever. Just to avoid that kind of problem. So I leave that piece out just to avoid, like I said. Now, the way that I do this is I will take a, like an image of, well, it's 14 inches tall. That means I'm going to need probably at least a two inches on every side of that. So I just add at least two inches. So 14 will go to 16. If I'm feeling like nervous about this, like I might, I might say 18 inches and then kind of measure it out that way and think about realistically, am I going to find a box that's 18 by 10 or so the way that it works with the postal service is you have a certain, you know, once the box goes up and the weight goes up, then the price goes up. So I'd rather err on the side of caution and go a little bit bigger than lighter. So what I've done, let me come look at this one and see what I did. What I've done here is because my item is, how tall was it again? I probably should add more to that now that I'm looking at it. So it's a maybe about 13 inches. So I only added one inch off the top and then all around the other sides. And then I put six pounds, seven ounces when it was actually three pounds, nine ounces. That's really generous as far as the weight goes, but with the packaging and the box, it's going to be more and it might be more like five pounds, but when you're shipping, you know, priority or ground advantage, then those prices start increasing based on the weight and the size of the box. And it's like a, a catch all, right? So if I changed this, let's say I changed it to five pounds. Let's see if that's going to change over here. It doesn't really change it because after at a certain threshold, there's like a window of this is how much it's going to cost, right? So let's say I want to change this to, <laughs> that would be an awfully big box. Change that to say 16 inches by 14 by 14. And as you can see, it didn't really change the, the prices there. So like I said, there's a, a threshold. So I sold these and I do have the measurement of one of the plates in my listing. So 10 inches. So I've got four of them at 10 inches. And I put in my listing that it was five pounds to ship. So when I measure, when I weigh these, these plates weigh 5.041 pounds. 
So I've actually underestimated the price of shipping on this, but I am counting on that catch all like window of amount of shipping. So truly, if I had done my due diligence on this, I would have listed this item and said that it was maybe six pounds or six and a half pounds. Do I think it's going to be a pound or more of packaging? Well, maybe because this is a, let me move over again. You know, it's, it's plate. So I'm going to have quite a bit of packaging with the bubble wrap and the box and the packaging. So let's see how I did on these plates. I'm going to go ahead and wrap them up, make my box and I'll come back and show you what it was. Let me show you what I've got so far. I have taken my box. I, at the bottom have put a little bubble wrap and a little bit of this paper. And then I've bubble wrapped each plate. And then in between each plate and the sides of the box, I have put a little more filler so they won't shift around while they're in there. They're not going to go anywhere. And then because I don't have a bigger box, I will take another box the same size and fit it over top. I can to reduce weight, cut off the flaps of this box, but I don't think it's going to create that much more weight. So I don't normally do that. Every now and then I will, but I don't think it's really going to affect weight too, too much. So let me finish this up. So here I've got my box all done and I am weighing it. My scale turned back on over here. It is weighing 6.1 pounds. So let's take a look at how I did. Here is my listing. The buyer paid $11.13 because I had it listed at five pounds and this was the size of my box. So... Let me measure what I've got here. My box. I have 13 by 10 by 8. So now I'll just come in and adjust right here. 13, 10, 8. And here I'm going to put 6 and I'll round up 6.2. And now you can see the total is $12.32. So I didn't estimate correctly, so I'm going to be paying out a buck 32 over. So it still happens, you know, where you don't estimate it correctly and you have to pay a little bit more. So that's usually why I will, when I measured it at five pounds, when I weighed them, I would tack on a few extra pounds and then the, the box dimensions. But usually it goes in the other direction where there's a little bit of extra left over on the price they paid for shipping. So it doesn't normally bother me too much. Like this is a buck 32. It's not anything that's going to break the bank or be, you know, it's just the cost of doing business and my bad for not estimating it correctly. So when you are doing this, you know, take that weight, take those measurements. And if you're just starting for sure, like, put it in a box and weigh it with the, with the material you think you're going to ship it with just to be safe. But just know like you could add on a little bit in the weight, add on a couple inches on the, on the dimensions and usually you'll be okay. This one is not too bad when I first started. Oh my gosh. I would eat it on the shipping all the time. So this I don't mind because it's just part of doing business and my own fault for not measuring it correctly. But I hope that you're able to pick something up, even if it was to learn from my mistakes. And I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you later. Bye guys.